Welcome back runners, this is Koryamune and today is another day, uh, it's a good day for a shoe comparison. Looking to the views and uh, to the uh, likes that I got in the previous video, it seems that you are interested in this kind of video and uh, therefore let's compare today two new shoes, the new Brooks Hyperion Tempo and the new Evo Ride 2. I opened the new library in um, the channel so you can find also the previous video. This video I already explained the different metrics that we will uh, collect uh, even for today comparison. The test basically will do the same test so there are five tests uh, with different pace each one on one minute and in the end we will find out which is the best shoes for which pace basically so that I can choose for, for my training the right shoes uh, according to the metrics that uh, I collected. So, uh, let's try and uh, see you in a moment. So guys, first test done. I forgot to say that we will use the Garmin chest strap and the strike pod to collect the metrics so the gears are always the same like in the previous video so let's do the second test a little bit faster <laughs> we are using the Hebrew right too so now we have the third test per minute 15 seconds per kilometer so let's do the third test now the next test is per minute per kilometer Let's do it. The Hebrew 2 is a little bit heavier than the Brooks Hyperion Tempo, so we have 247 grams for the Hero Ride 2 and uh, 212 grams for the Hyperion Tempo. But if you are interested to know all the differences between uh, these two different shoes, you can find the uh, video comparison in the link up here. So, guys, we have the last test. Let's do it. Last test completed. Thank you, God. <laughs> anyway, now let's change the shoe and repeat all these tests, okay? I forgot to say also that the two shoes are on the same range of price. Uh, the difference is the weight, basically, and also how the, the uh, midsole is built. Uh, we have in the Iberian Tempo the uh, nitrogen infused uh, foam and uh, in the Hiboride the, the cable fiber uh, embedded foam. So let's continue. So guys, third test completed. Two tests left. 
and we are done for today. Last one. Ooh. Okay, let's do it. So guys, we want to check if uh, there is any difference in the metrics collected which uh, could affect the running economy. But before to see and comment the results, let's have a quick recap of the metrics we have collected. So basically the ground contact time, uh, which indicates uh, the amount of time that your foot is in contact with the ground on each step, uh, measured in uh, milliseconds. The average vertical oscillation ratio, that is the vertical oscillation divided by your stride length. It should be under 10% if you want to run uh, with the optimal efficiency. The stride length, which is the distance covered uh, when you take two steps. Running power, so the amount of energy we are spending during a given period of time. The form power ratio, which is the form power divided by the total power. Lower values may indicate greater efficiency. And finally, the leg spring stiffness, which measures the stiffness of the muscles and tendons in your leg and uh, it's a measure of how well a runner recycled the energy applied to the ground in each stride. Increases indicate economy improvement over time. That being said, now let's see and comment the results. As you can see from the figures I marked in red, there are some differences in the ground contact time and in the vertical oscillation ratio. It seems that the E-Ride 2 performs better at a slower pace of 5 minutes per kilometer, 8 minutes per mile, because the average ground contact time is less than in the apparent tempo. On the other hand, at a pace of 4 minutes per kilometer, uh, 6 minutes 20 seconds per mile, it seems like uh, at a similar ground contact time we have a smaller vertical oscillation ratio of the appearance tempo, which means that the appearance tempo is more efficient at this pace. Another interesting insight, it comes from the strat length metric values uh, highlighted here in green, uh, which are higher for the Hero Ride 2, except in one case. So it seems like the Hero Ride 2 allow us to have a longer stride despite a similar vertical oscillation ratio for both models. So it's a good sign if we improve the stride length, keeping the same vertical oscillation because we are improving our performance, but we need to pay attention to these metrics because uh, it could be a sign of overstriding. In regard to the formula running power and the leg stiffness, we don't have a big difference. The figures are pretty similar for both shoes. Interesting to see how despite the energy increases with the pace, the form power rate decreases, meaning an increase in our running efficiency. That means that generally both shoes are good for running fast. It's also nice to see that my vertical oscillation ratio was below 10% for all the tests. So considering the figures collected, we can say that the shoes have the same metrics at this pace mentioned here in the left hand side of the slide and uh, that the Hebrew Ride 2 perform better at 5 minutes per kilometer, 8 minutes 3 seconds Mm, per mile, whereas the period tempo for a pace of 4 minutes uh, per kilometer, 6 minutes 20 seconds uh, per mile. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, please consider to subscribe and uh, see you next time.